The Washington press conference will begin shortly. The team is on their way. A few reminders as we're waiting. Please make sure that you turn off your cell phones during the news conference. Also, video recording and flash photography are not permitted. If you have a question, if you could please raise your hand and identify your name and affiliation prior to asking your question and to which student athlete it is to, that would help as well. Thank you. Could have been a little nicer yesterday about to that. <laughs> yeah. Test audio test, one, two, three. Sending audio, one, two, three. Testing. Questions to all five starters, and then they'll be dismissed, and then any questions to you. Awesome. We'll take 10 minutes. No right. assignments. Thank you for joining us for the press conference for the Washington women's basketball team. We're joined at the podium by head coach Mike Neighbors and student athletes Kelsey Plum, Talia Walton, Chantel Osahor, Katie Collier, and Alexis Achi. We will begin with questions for the student athletes and then turn it over to questions to the head coach. How about this, Mike? Can we come I'm, all the way over? I'm next. <laughs> you got to get them first, right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, Kelsey, I guess start with you. Adam Jude, the Seattle Times. Um, how about this? You come all the way back east, and you, you get to play Stanford yet again. Um, what about this matchup? Uh, obviously, has you excited for tomorrow? Well, Stanford's a phenomenal team. They're coached by Tara Vanderveer, obviously one of the greatest coaches in college basketball, men or women. Um, you know, they're going to have a great game plan. And they're going to have players that are trying to execute that game plan. So, um, you know, we have our work cut out for us. We're really excited about this opportunity. And, um, you know, we're going to go out there and continue to try to do what we've been doing this whole tournament. For Talia, this is Steve McGargie from the Associated Press. He played Stanford twice before very different results, other than one game being at Stanford, one game being in Seattle. Just what was the difference in those two games that kind of caused y'all to play so well one game and lose the other? Um, 
you know, going there, um, obviously it's hard to go to their arena and play. Um, they did a great job against us, and I think that a lot of credit does go to them, but I don't think that we played our best basketball there. And then coming back to Seattle, um, you know, it was tournament time, and, and that's when, you know, everybody rises to the occasion. And so we're going to try and do the exact same thing out here again, just another tournament. Um, but just like they're going to have a great game plan, we will uh, have one as well. Matt Calkins, Seattle Times. Chantel, uh, Rebecca Lobo was tweeting about you last night saying, hey, just watching Chantel makes me smile every time I, every time I watch her. Um, I, I'm curious, you have, a, you have an unorthodox game, I would say. I don't think anybody would dispute that. W what are some of the different things that people have, different ways people have described your game over the years? Anything that stands out? I think people try to be nice. They say, oh, my game, my shot is interesting. I mean, it is unorthodox, and it, I mean, it goes in, so it's like, whatever, if it goes in, it goes in, but um, I think people like it, because it's, it's not something you see every day. No mic. <laughs> <laughs> how about you guys, and Mike, you can get in on this too, like, how would you guys describe the way Chantel plays? I've said she's kind of mixed Draymond meets Boris Diaw from Spurs. Um, that's kind of the only, I mean, way I've, I've kind of thought of it. Yeah. She's definitely unlike any other player that I've ever seen or played with, but I like it. I'll take it any day. <laughs> <Yeah>. Amen. <laughs> she's just so passionate and she's always herself out there and she's, she's our hype man. Yeah, our hype man. Have you ever seen her go boom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're missing out. <laughs> Plum, run, run, I get to be run. The only thing I add is I, I, she's a chess player playing basketball. You know, I've said that before, and, and I think I, I haven't come up with something better than that yet. She's a step or two ahead of the rest of us. Um, and I, it didn't take long to see that again from the first time I saw her to what I see on a daily basis. It's, it doesn't seem to cease to amaze me, and, and it, it does make you smile. I think Rebecca nailed it on the head. It's, um, it, it brings you joy, uh, and I walk through, and I, I guess people don't watch film on her. I don't know. I mean, because she does, this is what she does. She's been doing this now for three years, and <coughs> people are yet still surprised, and, and I've had a number of coaches say to me, we show our kids film. We tell them, we tell them, we tell them, but they don't believe it until they see it for about, you know, 19 and 17. And five. Yes, for Katie and Alexis, uh, was there something about that game down at Stanford? At, on paper, it looks like your most disappointing performance maybe this season. It seems like since then, uh, you guys have been, I don't know, if it's say a different team, but you guys have obviously um, played a lot better. Was there something about that performance down there that you know changed things for you guys? or? Um, if you think back a little bit at, at that game and, and what happened that night. Um, I don't know if it was like a turning point for us, but um, we just recognized it wasn't our best game. And yeah, we just turned around and we've never, I don't know, I don't think we like stuck on that game. We just, you know, saw the next game and kept playing better. And, you know, we showed up and played them really good against in the tournament. So yeah, just carry that on. Do y'all yeah. remember that game? That yeah. was the game when Lily Thompson went off on us. Yeah. It was my fault. It was my fault. We, we said we weren't going to guard Lily Thompson. Bad plan. <laughs> she hit five threes in the first quarter. That was the difference in the game. It was even from that point on. There's nothing those kids down on that end did, and there was no turning point. They had scored 31 points the game before at Arizona State, I think. They weren't shooting it very well. We were going to take a calculated risk, and I looked pretty dumb that night after the first quarter. She was player of the week that week, by the way. She didn't send me a card. <laughs> Any other questions for the student athletes? If not, then they can be dismissed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. And we'll open.
open it up with questions for the head coach. Mike Graham Hayes, ESPNW. What, what role have, have Chantel and Kelsey played for this program just in terms of staying committed when you took over and kind of setting a tone on the court and just shaping what, what you want UW to be? Yeah, both of them had the opportunity. They had their letters of intent uh, given back to them by the university that week when Kevin left to go to Ohio State and the transition was being made. Um, you know, my first two, three, there was three phone calls. Brianna Ruiz was coming in as well, reached out to all three of those kids. Uh, had different conversations with, e with each of them. Uh, Kelsey's was pretty cut and dry. Uh, I actually went to see Chantel and make sure that um, she understood that our plan was the same, that there was going to be no change in what we had foreseen in her future. Uh, so them sticking with the new coaching change was um, – it gave me confidence that we were headed in the right direction. But then for them to stick through the – uh, mistakes I made as a first-year head coach. Uh, you know, a lot of kids will, will transfer in this climate in these days, uh, and they s just stuck around and stuck around. We just kept digging in and battling and uh, getting to know each other better. Um, it takes you a little longer to get to know Chantel, and she um, it, she's not as open with her feelings, so it took a little longer, uh, but we developed a relationship through her freshman year that was really, really solid. And obviously what she brings to us, not only on the court, but the off the court stuff that these guys are talking about, the, the team, the great teammate that she is, uh, how hype she does get um, and how they rally around her. Um, they really take care of each other. And, and those two guys, huge part of that, uh, that came into that first class, along with Bree, who's not here because of her injury and just had a surgery. When this regional started, I mean, it Teams that got attention, Notre Dame and Maryland had final four streaks going on. Kentucky looked like they could not have to leave Lexington and maybe get to the final four. Not a lot of people were talking about yourselves or Stanford. Are you surprised? I mean, did you think from the start this was a potential matchup in the regional final that you might see Stanford again? Or yeah. Are you surprised by the matchup we have here? I, I think all those teams deserve the credit that you're talking about. They've certainly earned that in the past. I do think we kind of did fly under the radar a little bit out west. Um, I, I think when I looked at the bracket, the first thing I noticed was that we were in there with Stanford. And it was going to happen. Anytime you get multiple teams, you know, five, four more teams in there, you're going to have somebody in the same conference in the same bracket. We had ended up being us. But that did jump at me. So that would be great if it could be us and Stanford. And that would guarantee a Pac-12 team in the Final Four. Um, as it played out, obviously, you know, you don't, you don't look at it and go, oh, yeah, we're going to win at, at Maryland. And we're gonna... I didn't look past Penn, first of all, because those guys had a really, really good team and um, a really, really good season. So I didn't look that deep at that point in time. But as it started to shape up, it certainly seemed conceivable. And then after we won last night, it didn't surprise me one bit that Stanford played as well as they did. They've been playing really well. Um, our league was very balanced this year, a lot of different styles to get you ready for tournament play. Um, and I think that that 18 game schedule that we played really prepared everybody in our league. I think we've got a few teams sitting at home that beat each other up in the middle of our league. You know, you're looking, I think Oregon's still alive deep into the NIT. And I think had they not had a, just a devastating injury to one of the greatest players in the history of our league, I, I think they would be in this tournament as well. And uh, same thing with USC, had a couple of unfortunate things happen at their place. Or I think we could have had multiple, uh, you know, as many as seven teams in this tournament this year. So it's not a surprise to me that, that we're having this, the league is having its success. It was a concentrated effort from about, Natalia, what, four years, four or five years ago where we really <clears throat> sat in a, a room at, and, and developed a plan and all the coaches um, had, had great thoughts on it. And the league really truly did care about trying to raise our profile. And, and it's kind of fun to see happen then. Nick Gray, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, you know the pulse of the locker room. Given what is possible tomorrow, is this something that you kind of have to try to put into context for them? Not with this group. Um, some teams I think you would have to try to kind of explain things to, but this group's, uh, they're pretty into it. They understand the, the gravity of the situation and, and their studies, their students of the game. I mean, you can just tell by the way Chantel and Kelsey talk. They know what's going on uh, around all of basketball. So they certainly get it. 
uh, I, you know, I'm not sure the moment's hit them yet. It hit me this morning for the first time answering a couple of text messages that you're a game away from, from playing in the Final Four. You know, we make, as coaches, we make all these plans. Hey, we'll see you at the Final Four. Hey, let's get together at the Final Four. Hey, let's talk at the Final Four. And somebody said, hey, if we don't get a chance to talk at the Final Four because you're playing, and it, that's when it hit me. It's, it's one game away from that. So uh, I think these kids probably get it. So the, the worst thing I could do would be screw it up by giving them my opinion on it. So I'll just get out of their way, let them figure it out. Like not, not in terms of it being better or worse, but what is different about short prep time when you know a team as well as Stanford as opposed to going from it? Yeah, for us, it's that's how we're kind of built. We're built around terminology and language in our system. Uh, we don't do a whole lot of tweaking, um, so it, we could literally talk through this. I, I don't. We wouldn't even have to walk through if we don't need to. And again, with the Pac-12, we play Friday. We play Friday Sunday, so we're used to having a day in between in preps. So. It's business as usual. We'll talk about it a lot more than we'll we'll run today. If you know, if you came to our practice, it would not be a, it wouldn't look like a practice. But it's what we've been doing since January. So there will be a, a very routine feel to it, um, and, and I think that's an important part. These kids being in a routine that they're comfortable with and trying not to get uh, too far away from that to to magnify the situation because in, in all reality, it's, it's just another game like we've been playing. I mean, we're guaranteed, based on what happened last night, we're guaranteed at least two teams seated fourth or below in the final four. What is it? And obviously, we, this game has one team going for its fourth national title, but what is it? Fourth consecutive national title, but what does it say for the maybe the improved depth across the game that there could be two four seeds, maybe two seven seeds in the final four? Yeah, and I think it's happening in our game in a year when there's has there been an upset in the men's Sweet 16 yet? I don't think there has. I don't think there's been a lower seed win. Yeah, yeah, it, but I, I still don't think that was a lower seed. I think the higher seeds have still won. So there were some in the, the, the round of 32, and there was obviously some in that first round. But I think in the Sweet 16, there, I don't think there has been. Y'all have to check my exact math on that. But um, I think it's great for our game to have some new faces out there. You know, we're all, we, we've all read it's the UConn Invitational, and I have no problem with that. I mean, <clears throat> We all marvel at what John Wooden did and back in the day at UCLA, so I think we should embrace what's going on at UConn. You know, somebody's going to be the team eventually that stops that, I mean, I think. <laughs> um, but I do think it's good for our game to have some, some conversations going on with some new faces, uh, some new players, um, and new programs. I think it helps raise our profile in recruiting on the West Coast. And if we can continue to keep those great players on the West Coast and give them a reason uh, with our Pac-12 networks going now, the TV's available, and I think it gives us the, um, the profile that we need to continue to recruit the athletes to compete with the teams uh, on this side of the Rocky Mountains. Any other questions to the head coach? Thank great. you very much. Thank you.